Yes, it's Saturday, and uh, I was looking uh, in this room here, a coffee table book that I particularly like. It's a book about St. Matthew's Cathedral, and it shows something very special in St. Matthew's Cathedral. It's the wedding chapel and the wedding of Mary and Joseph. And these golden gilded carved figures. We have Joseph there looking like he does in the statue in our church, with kind of a little Italian uh, influence. And there's Mary, the attendants, and the one who's overseeing their vows or their betrothal, their, their promises. And above them, God the Father. And this is all part of a chapel that's at St. Matthew. So if you ever get wed there, you got to make sure you get a picture of this <laughs> or if it, in a wedding or part of a wedding. Just a great picture. Well, because of the image I saw at St. Matthew's Cathedral on you know, the, the marriage image of Joseph and Mary, I decided to come back into the church and remember that I did a wedding here just three weeks ago and I preached on Joseph and Mary as part of the wedding homily just because of the year of St. Joseph. I figured, you know, it was a good good time to do it. And I think I'm going to revisit that homily that I gave and uh, make it a reflection today for you. And then I'm also going to uh, borrow from some other wedding material that other priests have talked about. Okay? Now, when Joseph decided that he should get married, okay, then he wed Mary and they got betrothed. Now, they were first officially, like legally betrothed. They were uh, engaged to be married. And in the, the Jewish way, once you say you will be married, you are now legally married. You are uh, connected to one another, okay? But they do not marry until like a year later where they live together. Now, Joseph and Mary, they had a relationship with each other because of Jesus in the middle, Okay, so this is really what marriages are meant to be today. They're mostly meant to be Jesus in the middle. Why are we marrying? God has called us to marry. And who is in the middle of our marriage? Jesus. The gospel story with Joseph and his own revelation from the angel is that he was told, as in a dream, that he was to take Mary as his wife into his home, and that he was to raise the child, because he knew Mary was pregnant with a child, and he was to name the child Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The angel was making it pretty clear that it was the Messiah coming into his family. It says that Joseph obediently accepted the angel's revelation and he took Mary as his wife. And they got married. And he took Jesus into their home. Well, Jesus is meant to be in the middle of every marriage, every wedding. We are to welcome him as the third party. Three to get married, as the marriage prep program puts it. Here's a picture in the book of the Holy Spouse's espousal. And it just shows that the two of them are open to what God has planned. See, really in the end, it's all of what God has planned for us. I know couples who have children. I know couples who have adopted. I know couples who have just lived in a plan of, of loving the world through their own love. And so we do what God has called us to do. I'm reading from uh, the Holy Spouse's prayer book of marriage. And it's a devotion to the Holy Spouses of Christ. And 
I'm reading right out of page 85 of this book. The incarnation of the Son of God to a betrothed couple redeemed marriage, which was wounded by the original sin of Adam and Eve. Whereas our first parents brought lust into the sexuality and pain in childbearing, Genesis 3, verse 7, verse 16, the Mary and Joseph model selfless love and the joy of wholeheartedly receiving the gift of life into marriage brought things into a fulfillment. Their unique call to permanently live in virginity within marriage was not a negation of marital sexuality, but rather divine affirmation that sexual relations are related to childbearing. At the center of human history, the singular event of conception by the Holy Spirit affords the only circumstance in which true marriage and total virginity coexist. St. John Paul taught that marriage and virginity are the only two forms of true love. The Holy Spouses are the universal models of both of these forms, Mary and Joseph. Their vocation evidences these truths about marriage. Number one, marriage between a man and a woman. Okay, to take on human nature, the son takes on the, the need of the human mother and the human father. The human of the divine and the human natures eliminates the need for Joseph to engender Jesus in the normal manner but does not eliminate the reality of the true fatherhood in every other sense. Number two, marriage is related to Cheryl bearing. In God's plan, Joseph and Mary, uh, and Mary were chosen for each other for the purpose of receiving Jesus into their marital love. From the time of the betrothal, they were open to whatever God would have in store for them, although unaware of that God would be in every newlywed couple and of some degree uh, the fecundity, the love poured out. And number three, sexual relations are related to the conception of children. So Mary and Joseph had no carnal knowledge of each other during their time prior to the incarnation. But the conception of Jesus and Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit uniquely fulfills the maritable purpose of childbearing in a manner that indicates their call to perpetual virginity. How does a unique virginal, virginal marriage relate to any other marriage? Simply put, the holy spouses can teach every couple to be open to God's plan for receiving children and to be selfless in their love for each other. In our times, contraception has led to direct contradiction of the three truths listed. But an understanding and acceptance of these truths can be a rejection of what it denies life, and husbands and wives then can have a faithful trust in God's parents to bear life. Well, I'm going to have to pull up here. I have uh, another seven or eight minutes of content that's mostly about the wedding homily I said, uh, or wedding thoughts I had for that wedding couple. Uh, as to be a gift on the year of Joseph, but we'll, we'll save that for Monday, okay? We'll do that Monday or Tuesday. Uh, it's time to end, though. And Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us and help us to grasp things uh, in this year of St. Joseph that we're meant to, to know and live and serve. Amen.